Praises to Kahi, the Ruwa Kadash, the Holy Spirit. Our praises to Anoki said. That's a higher key said. The great I am loving kindness. Our praises to most of the Lamb, our minister of forgiveness, Yasha, our Savior. Welcome to another installment of Clear Eyes, No Visine. We are back in the order of Melchizedek series. Yeah. But this is also the first episode of our Remembrance of Our Ancient Grandmother series. Why? Well, because the next high priest in our order of Melchizedek series is Noah. Noah, right? Noah. Yeah, man. And just like Enoch, there was a whole book allocated to the complete history of the great Noah. You understand? So like Enoch, we will have an introductory episode to Noah. Then start truly going into the Remembrance of Our Ancient Grandmother's book in our next episode. And, but Father willing, we get out some fire information and this information, right, in this introduction video, I mean, to really get us excited about this series. So Noah is the fourth high priest out of the numbered high priest communities. <laughs> there are 24 numbered high priest communities. Now, there are way more than 24 high priests, 
but there are 24 high priests with their communities that did 24 specific things that brought forth Christ most of the lamb, huh? The first high priest was Yasekad, who we know in the Bible as Adam. The second was Seth. The third was Enoch. In this series, we did episode we, um, we did an episode on Yasekad, Seth, and Enoch thus far, right? In this um order Melchizedek series. Enoch had a whole series to himself, and that's the Remembrance of Enoch playlist. Y'all check that thing out. We also did an episode in our Remembrance of Moses playlist dealing with some more of the works of Yasekad, Adam. What he helped establish and so and so forth, right? Y'all check out all those playlists because they will give a complete understanding of where we are at in our readings up to date, huh? You can check out the Clear Eyes No Vising playlist and see all the videos we've done concerning these books in the order the Lord has had us put out the information from the beginning, right? For those who are led in the spirit to do so, y'all check them things out. Now, in this Noah series, Things did not go the way we may have been taught things went. So it will be hard for ones to really let the spirit lead them off. <laughs> right? Saying the way they need to go into this information. Right? They think they know, but if they think they know. Well, hold on. Now, a lot of information were precept of the Bible, though. You did. But there will also be new information that gives understanding to things in the Bible. I really suggest that ones who are new to the channel after this episode will watch the Clear Eyes No Visine playlist. You can gradually progress through the information so that when you catch up to us here, you have an understanding of the direction and you can better process it. You understand? But as always, let the spirit flow, man. For real though. The links to those playlists are in the description. Right? So let's get started. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody that followed us through the Remembrance of Enoch series up to here. And shout out to everyone who binge watched and caught up, right? That's the spirit pushing all of us. He did. Yeah, yeah. Man, uh, y'all mash on the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you get to do so. Hit the bell so you're notified every time we drop something new, huh? This is the introduction of our Remembrance of Ancient Grandmother series, Noah. And it's our fourth episode in the Order of Melchizedek series. Noah, y'all know how we start things off, though. So we'll get it started. Revelation 3, 18. Baby, read that. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Clear eyes, no visee. Family, let's get it, huh? Okay, we are back in the book. Remember, it's Achi to start off. We are in the first book of Achi. In the first book of Achi, most of the Lamb is showing Achi the 24 numbered high priest communities. He has just finished showing Achi Enoch's community. Let's pick up with the fourth high priest community. We are in the book of Remembers of Achi, first Achi, chapter 2, verse 98. Let's read. And it came to pass that Achi, as he viewed these great things with Enoch, began to up began to think upon his grandfather Noah. Now Achi knew Noah, and they visited often before Noah went to Shem into the south land. Remember, Achi is the grandson of Shem, Melchizedek, which means Noah would be Achi's great grandfather. Man was living more years back then, so Achi would have known his great grandfather well. Are you there? Let's read. And Achi said to the Lord, Did my grandfather Noah help beget you? And the Lord said, He was a great friend and help to me, for he called forth an end to my suffering with the flood. Mozart, Christ said Noah did what? He was a great friend and help to me, for he called forth an ending to my suffering with the flood. Mozart, the lamb, which is the name the ancients called Christ, just told Achi that Noah called forth the flood. Huh? And Noah called forth the flood to put an end to Hamashiach's suffering. So that's something new, right? That's something new. The Bible did not tell us that Noah called forth the flood. In the Bible, it seemed like Noah was warned of the flood, but most of here in the book, remember, so Achi told us that Noah called forth the flood. And what else did Noah do? And he defined for all eternity by the intervention of his agency, the definition of the limits of my love and sorrows, so that when the wicked are fully ripe in their iniquity, they may be swept off the land. 
and he knew I had limitations as I came in the flesh as a man and the Lord God would not give me more than I could bear and Noah had compassion on me and proclaimed Selah and proclaimed Selah Salah means enough. That is enough of that. Salah. So Noah set so Noah set the boundaries of the Messiah's love and the boundaries of the Messiah's sorrow. What does that mean? Christ suffers when the righteous are doing th um, going through it. He did. Christ feels sorrow when the wicked do wickedly. Christ suffers because of sin. So when one sin reaches the capacity, when sin reaches the limit of our Savior's tolerance, the offender or offenders can be swept off the land. That sounds like what happened to us, Israel. Huh? Christ said by Noah, setting the limit of love, most will give. By setting the limit of suffering, most will face for the wicked sake. <laughs> That's what he said, the limit. Noah's having compassion on Moza by doing this, right? Verse 100. Now it came to pass that Noah gave the son of man a new name and called him the man. Every numbered high priest gives Moza or Christ a name that he will be known by. Yatsakai, named Christ the Lamb of God. Seth, named Christ the Word of God. And now we see that Noah named the Messiah, the man. Enoch named Christ the Word of his power, right? Yeah, read. And Noah is the brother to Shephetiel or fruit of trees. So the Eric Kodeshi that Noah is brother to, yes, we are all brothers or sisters to an Eric Kodeshi, which are holy watchers. Noah was brother to Shaphatiel or Chaphatiel, which is the Eric Kodeshi that represents the fruits of trees. Read. And the name Noah is the element of righteousness as it means quiet rest. Noah's name means quiet rest. Y'all know how we do. You know, because these names be proving their counts. We never looked into it before, and at least I didn't, right? Let's go to that in the concordance, though. Let's prove that. Another jewel, right? We've learned that, learned is that ancients named their children based on what the spirit says their agency or their life would do for Mozart. That's how they may name their children. In the ancient, that was our spiritual heritage. The spirit would tell us these things, right? And the spirit will confirm these things. I'm telling y'all, we were all... We were all created with spiritual purpose. And parents, when we are truly in tune with the spirit, the spirit will tell us our child's name. There are, they, there, there are ones out there, y'all, that have a spiritual gift of even naming children. Israel, our heritage, will return to us when we ask for it in obedience. Trust, family, for real. Let's see what most means. Uh, let's see what Noah means in the concordance. concordance. My bad, we are going to H. 5146 H5146 is um Noak Noak the same as 5113 oh 5118 I apologize rest Noak the patriarch of the flood Noah so that's definitely Noah right there rest right let's go to H5118 just to make sure Noak Noak or Noak from H5117 quiet rest y'all see that we get confirmation on the meaning of noah here why did that matter well because Moses said that noah had compassion for him christ told achi that noah understood that there would be a limit to what Moses could tolerate in the flesh so there was a limit set so Moses would not have to bear more than he could bear so now Moses tolerates way more than any of us right but there's still a limit are we taught that no, I don't think so. Moses said Noah called forth an end to Moses' suffering. Hmm? He gave the Messiah rest. Noah means rest, right? To me, that is circumstantial evidence to this account, right? Let's keep reading. And he, by the intervention of his agency, decreed the conditions under which the Son of Man could find rest indeed. You see that? Noah used his agency to ensure that Moses could complete his task in the flesh so, that's, so that nothing could be too much for Moses, for Christ. So that's our Savior, so that our Savior could endure to the end. And if he could endure to the end, we can too. If he can tolerate it, we can too. Read. And also, the wife of Noah has a name in righteousness. And Emzara means to be like fruit or delightful fruit. And Noah is the brother to the fruit of trees. 
So Noah's wife's name was Amzara. It means to be like fruit or delightful fruit. And Noah was a brother to the fruit of the tree. So Amzara's ministry must have been major in Noah's. So look, that's how the account ends in Achi concerning Noah. Now, I want y'all to understand. It was years after ben Alim got the books of remembrance of Achi until he got the book of remembrance of Enoch. Um, in the book of remembrance of Enoch, Noah was mentioned briefly in there. And it was years after ben Alim got the book of remembrance of Enoch until he got the book of remembrance of our ancient grandmothers. And that's when he finally got the understanding of what really happened in Noah's time. Why is that? We're going to read and find out in the, um in, in future episodes, right? But in, in, in the fourth episode of our Order of Melchizedek series, and that in the introduction, this introduction to our Remembrance of Ancient Grandmother series, we're going to start getting an idea of the things that went down in the past. And so we can understand the truth, right? So let's get let's get started. Today we're going to go over the introduction of the um the ancient grandmother's book, the book remembers of our ancient grandmothers and we're going to run through it. We ain't going to do too much. We're just going to see what was on Ben Aline's spirit and uh, on his mind before and during, right? So, man, y'all sit back, man. Uh, let's get it. The introduction to the book of remembers of our ancient grandmothers. Let's go. The Book of Remembrance of Our Ancient Grandmothers is a companion book with the Book of Remembrance of Enoch and the Book of Remembrance, the first and second books of Achi. The first two deal with the same period of time, from Eden to the Flood, with individual story overlaps. All of the Books of Remembrance are an account obtained from visions brought through the use of the Urim. The Book of Remembrance of Enoch record concerns that the development of the righteous people of Enoch. It takes place in the geographic area east and south of the Oral Sea, which land they call Ma'in, pronounced Ma'in, which means the dwelling place of God. It concludes with the righteous people of Enoch being translated into heaven, or it could be said taken back to Eden, which occurs just before the time of the flood. The Book of Remembrance of Our Ancient Grandmothers takes place in an area west of the Caspian Sea, mostly between the greater and lesser Caucasus Mountains, Caucasus Mountains, and also west into modern-day Turkey. The Caspian Sea was called by the ancients the Shaman Sea, Shaman Sea, because it sparkles in the sunlight. They called the land Qatar or Qatar after a prominent mountain there. While the people of Enoch were isolated from the wicked, the people of Qatar were surrounded by encampments of wicked people. This volume is an account of their social and spiritual development leading up to the flood when the most evil of the wicked were destroyed. In the first chapter, you will read about the overreaching theme of this work, which is the task of the Lord in preparing the earth and its peoples in such a way that during the long time expanse between the flood and the second coming of the Lord, the righteous who will continue to live on the earth intermixed with the wicked societies could maintain and preserve a knowledge of God's holy purposes in creation. So y'all remember that when you were looking at Enoch's crew or Enoch's community, they were in Anak or Amain or Zion and they were far away from the land of the wicked, right? And the Lord was dealing with them in a heavy way, giving them all this, the mysteries and the secrets from way back in the beginning so they could grow. But these people in Qatar, their their um, their encampment was intermingled with where the, the wicked's encampments were, right? And so now we're getting an understanding of what's going on here. Go ahead. When the scribes and I began the process of using the Urim to obtain this volume, we had no idea that the information would take this path, nor did we anticipate the most remarkable revelation of how the Lord used women as primary as his primary resource to accomplish this task. We feel that the world has languished too long without this vital information that reveals the role of ancient women who by their strength, virtue, and intelligence set in place major social influences that are foundational to all the world's cultures and religions to this day. Their influence was and is essential for all the world's people in maintaining their social conscience and spiritual viability. 
This special edition also includes a section brought by Yerim explaining the protection tablet of Zedek Labab. In the appendix, there are instructions for these of the Holy Order to access the abiding angels of the fourth station of heaven. Including also is a special notice to all the righteous concerning recent important developments in heaven. So that's um that's in the that's in the the back of this same book, but the a new edition of this book, this is a Telebab edition, right? But we're dealing with the main portion, the first part of this book that was given to Benelin. This is a Telebab edition was given to him about like two years ago. This was given to him many moons before that. Let's go. One such woman was named Ada. The power of this woman to forgive was so remarkable that I thought I must not understand what I was seeing with the Urim. So I set the Urim aside for a while. When the scribes and I set out again to view it, not only did her example of forgiveness turn out to be correct, but we were given extensive new understanding about forgiveness through her example. Another remarkable grandmother was a woman named Shamar who is a principal person to impact human society with the development of language. In Eden, our first parents were raised by God. He was their father. They had no experience with human parents. In Eden, there was no sin and thus no need for reproval or correction. When our first parents did sin, they left Eden in a very short time afterward. They had no parenting skills. This undoubtedly accounts for the things such as the wide differences among their children as the righteous Abel and Cain in the murder. They had in all 34, they had in all 34 children. It was not until the third or a fourth generation that parents began to develop the ability to communicate to their children a knowledge of wayward behavior. It was this woman Shamar the third generation, who was responsible for originating the vocabulary to do so. Notably, in her elder years, she began to develop a language to express an understanding of personal emotional injury as she aided the people in understanding the trauma of slavery. But this was not all. She also coaxed from her father, Azan, second generation, information about an important aspect of spiritual communication that occurred in Eden between our first parents, our first human father in all creation. That information was crucial in enabling Noah to call forth the flood. Even being very old, she was still the first to put into language a deep understanding of how people can know their guardian angels and how to interact with them. These that's that's deep. That was Shamar. We're gonna talk about that sister as well in this series. She taught people how to access their guardian angels. That's deep, right? She also helped with language and communication. So these we're, we're, is letting us know that in this book right here, we're gonna be dealing with the beginning, <coughs> the intricacies of the beginning, right? How society was starting up and working together to continue. Go ahead. These last two achievements have been lost to the world until this writing. One last example on this topic is a grandmother named Tava. When she was a young teenager, she intervened in a large gathering of her people who were trying to determine if they would fight the wicked who had been given rise to the Nephilim. Her simple, wise speech turned the tide and her people migrated away rather than engaged in the, in the Nephilim, in the Nephilim wars preceding the flood. Her people were saved from destruction and preserved in their righteousness. Noah's mother and father were newly married about that time and were among those who moved west in that great migration. If it had not been for Tavai's wise counsel, all the forebearers of Noah would have been scattered or destroyed and it would have changed the course of the earth. It is certain that without the influence of these women, all the knowledge and understanding mankind gained up to the time of the flood concerning the nature of God, the knowledge of creation, and the comprehension of the meaning of the gift of life could not have been passed on to the generations after the flood. I think it would be helpful here to give the reader some some explanation of terms. 
Throughout these volumes, the ancient names of people and places are used. The original, the ancient name of God is Anoki said, or I am loving kindness. The original names of Adam and Eve, our first parents, are Yatsakad, the first counselor and companion to creation, and Kava, life giver. She was later called Naba, which means the mother of all the living. Their son Cain's original name was Kene, a sweet reed. And Abel's name was Metaniah, gift of God, rather than needs to be replaced, which is the meaning of the name Abel. The original name for the man that God would become, the one we call Jesus Christ, was Moza the Lamb. So y'all, y'all look, y'all remember that y'all go look up Abel in the concordance to see what it what it, what it means, right? Who would name their son that? Yeah, so he just he giving you all the ancient names. We've been giving different names over time for different reasons, right? Go ahead. The original name for the man that God would become, the one we call Jesus Christ, was Moza the Lamb, which means the living waters that flow out with me. And finally, the Air Kadeshi are the holy watchers or angels of heaven mentioned in the Bible and the Dead Sea Scrolls, while the Dekadarshi are the fallen watchers who fell away with Satan when he rebelled. Throughout this account, there is an example after example of women being central in their assistance to the Lord and his task to prepare the righteous to endure in the time following the flood. While the influence of these women was primary importance in shaping, was of primary importance in shaping society, as incredible as it may sound, their most important achievement was in the area of development of language. Humans are not born with the ability to speak in terms of language. They are born with the ability to feel, to process and learn from their environment and to make sounds with their voices. As children grow, they develop the ability to mimic sounds and develop speech. And this is unique to humans. As you read this volume, you will encounter many instances when new circumstances initiated the need for new vocabulary. From the pr practical aspects of developing the ability to teach and guide children as parents to the theoretical explanations of new ideas, such as life after death. And now a word about what to look for with the development of language as you read. In my view, Yatsakad had a very limited vocabulary and he didn't seem to gain more as he went on to live his long life. The instances of him speaking are primarily his rehearsal of that which God said to him in Eden. He most often taught his children by quoting things that God had taught him. Kava, however, did increase her vocabulary as her need to teach her children was more of a daily need, but she didn't increase it nearly as much as those in the succeeding generations. As interesting, as an interesting thing to note, is the first family was widely dispersed at the time when Kane murdered his brother. This was very early on. This indicates that the early development of language took place in many different places with a variety of groups all at the same time. What the reader will find transpiring during this culturally formative period is in the land of Ma'in, there were developed there developed a cultural norm pointing toward using a language of feelings. In the land of Qatar, there developed more of a verbal language to communicate. In the appendix, there is a chart illustrating the contrast of social views established in these two places. Throughout the narrative, the Lord directs specific persons in Mayim to migrate to Qatar in order to facilitate this development of language and culture. Because of this, Qatar was the place where formal worship, teaching, and learning first developed. An example from the chart in the appendix would be the Ten Guidances. These original guidances, which later became the Ten Commandments, were given to the people of Ma'in by Enoch and were called the Ten Guidances for Happy Living. They were viewed to be for the purpose of people acting in such a way to bring happiness to Enoch, he said, so that he wouldn't be burdened with the sadness or anxiety over his children. 
But in Qatar, these guidances were expressed in clear language for the purpose of social cohesion and a sense of order so that the people could live in happiness together. It was from Qatar that these guidances evolved later into being called commandments long after the flood. In Ma'in, a priesthood authority. Hold on, hold on real quick. You see that? That's interesting. And looking forward to getting there where we, we're going to see an account of the original Ten Commandments, which we'll call the Ten Guidances. The, uh, the Lord is um, showing Ben Alim, and Ben Alim is telling us through his introduction the differences in society, right? Well, in this, in, in, in Ma'in, right, how they took the Ten Commandments, how they took the Ten Guidances. And in Qatar, because they were in a different situation, how they used the Ten Guidances to the Ten Commandments. And then because Qatar was in that situation, how over time those Ten Guidances turned into Ten Laws, right, over time. It's interesting, but we will get into that in this series. Let go. In Ma'in, priesthood authority was called orders of service. The orders were defined by men's natural capabilities to feel specific aspects of Anoki Said's feelings and desires. But in Qatar, these orders were communicated using language of words and out of that event and out of that eventually developed the concept of priesthood offices. Noah's son Shem was also known as Melchizedek and in time he came to be viewed not only with the title of priest but as high priest. In his day he was described as a man of Ibarra which simply means one who could cross over in his spirit from the temporal world into the world of Eden. A man in such an order of service was viewed as one who could join with all the aspects of the feelings of Enochi said. It was not originally intended to become a position or a title. All this development of language was critical and necessary for the people who remained on the earth after the flood. Scholars now know that many of the world's religions have a foundation in some way with how the ministry and knowledge of Enoch came to be expressed through language. This is so, even though Enoch did not write in words, but rather using nonverbal symbols inscribed on stone tablets. The people of Qatar who dispersed both before and after the flood took with them oral traditions and teachings from Enoch and others. They were able to translate this oral tradition into written form once writing was developed. And those teachings have influenced the world in many ways clear into our own day. You will find some of those pivotal teachings in the stories of these seven grandmothers who were viewed by their contemporaries as the foremost women of the earth. It was also beneficial to the reader. It would also, excuse me, be beneficial to the reader to understand how we use the terms translation and interpretation in relation to these volumes. All of the four volumes of the Book of Remembrance are an interpretation of stone tablets. A translation is when something written with symbols is transferred from one written language into another. How the concept of interpretation is used in this work will be new to many readers. One would naturally wonder how a whole volume could come from a stone tablet that has no words on it in any language. The meaning of the symbols can be translated into English. They are consistent between many tablets. The time of writing these tablets covers a period that may span around a thousand years. And because of this consistency in the express symbols, we have, we have been able to understand the general meaning of the symbols. However, understanding the meaning of the symbols would never result in a narrative such as we have here. So y'all, y'all hear that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the tablets, the tablets is how he gets the information. He and he is able to recognize um, some of the symbols on the tablet because there are so many different tablets with re that reuse the same symbol that he can start to understand what this symbol means and he can translate it for the most part going through the symbols. But what what Better Liam just said, well, there's no way that just transferring looking at those symbols could you get a count like this. No, you putting on that urine gets him the to the amazing visuals. Let go. An interpretation is quite another matter. When using the Urim, I have never seen words, but rather people and places. 
and I have felt their feelings and the meaning of their thoughts and speech. These feelings and visions are not vague or dim, but explicitly clear and real. The tablet is in hand while using the urine. The tablet becomes the definition of the boundaries that w- of that which is seen. The person seen does not look at the tablet. The tablet is present and in continual close contact actually sets the parameters of what is seen through the urine. So the vision is about the people who created the tablet, the society that it affected. In many ways, the vision before the Urim, thus defined, provides an actual historical record and much of the writing. With the Urim, I hear names and I feel their meaning. In formal settings that come with the vision, I am able in large measure to quote what is being felt and spoken. As I see and feel in those settings, my mind must construct instantly, instantly, thoughts in English, which I then say out loud for the scribes to record. There are generally four scribes because it is very hard to write it all with accuracy as fast as it comes sometimes. So between the four of them, one or another will fill in the part that someone else missed. Most chapters come out of an approximately 50 minute session. That time frame seems fairly consistent because the emotional level of such visions is very intense and a condition of saturation is reached where I cannot go on. So yeah, yeah, um, me and my wife have been in part, uh, like we told y'all before, been part of those urine sessions. It's, it's very interesting. So when it comes to the um, described part, Benalin will will put it on the urine. Uh, he puts the urine, the two stones on the urine and thumb, right? And he holds it up to his eyes with his hands. The Yerman Thumb holds the two stones up to his eyes. And um he has the he has the tablet sitting right in front of him, right? And he don't gotta look at the tablet, it just sitting right in front of him. And then Mosa starts dealing with him. And then you have the scribes, anyone in the room sitting behind him. Um I'm just trying to remember the things that were significant about it. He would have to have the sunlight. The more sunlight that was coming through the clouds, the more clear and more evident the vision was. It didn't, it, no sunlight didn't stop it, but the sun made it more clear. You know what I'm saying? The lights from the sun made it more clear. It was interesting. And so the, the scribes would write down what he was saying, and it will be like, when we were there, it would be like seven of us. You know what I'm saying? And that's because it was, it was uh, once of the 23rd community as well there trying to see and um but it'll be seven seven people back behind him scribing right now what he said and after what was said was done we would then come together and um the head scribe the um the lead scribe would would, would have her her paper and she would start reading and when she'll get to a place where she didn't know what was said because you know you subscribe you you, you only can you know it, it, she would ask anybody else if they fill that line in and then usually by the end of the scribe session every word that Ben Ling was said was recounted because someone one of the scribes got everything right very interesting you dig and so after that after that what did it talk about right here after the scribe the sessions are completely Oh, yeah, 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 the sessions. The sessions, you know, after the sessions, you know, we, we talk about it. We talk about the names that were brought up. We start going into concordances. And it's genuinely, he does not know what these names mean. Well, he might feel it, right? But he'll go into the concordance to um, to definitely confirm it, right? So he, he might feel it, but he goes to confirm it. Man, it was so much that we got out in the Moses reading, y'all. Like, that was new that I ain't even talking about yet till we get there. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to study it more and to understand it in case my beautiful Israelite people start grilling me with questions. I want to make sure I can understand fully. But, man, yo, this is dope, y'all. <laughs> For real, though. You hear me? Let's keep going. The sessions are completely unrehearsed. And what is written is not varied away from, but can be clarified later through careful editing. What that means is that there's only so much that we will hear um, during the reading because Ben Alim is looking and speaking on what he sees. And man, like y'all know, if y'all walk out, walk outside and it's jumping in the neighborhood, right? You only can tell, and you telling someone on the phone what's going on. You only can speak to him about so much what's going on. So that's what he does. And after he goes and gets the urine reading notes, he'll go in and, and start writing the stuff down like you see it in these books. And the, the most high, the, 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 the most high, the most high, the Lord, the Lord would bring um 
a lot of the stuff to his remembrance, right? That he is saw in the urine. And he also can, he gonna say it in here too, I think. He can also put that urine back on and go and see it again himself just to make sure he got the right information. Like, yo, family, this stuff is off the chain. This stuff is off the chain. So let's, 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 let's try to finish this off. Go ahead. At times, I have had to go back later and look with Urim again at some specific event. I mention all this about the use of Urim to help demystify its use. Demystify. Okay, demystify its use. In conclusion, what we have produced in this volume is remarkable. It has the capacity to greatly enhance the reader's spiritual growth and overall understanding. Each volume in this series has greatly impacted my own life, as well as our corporate understanding and worship within our community. My hope is that each reader will approach this work with seriousness and with faith. When reading this material, when reading this material, faith is obtained by allowing the writing to speak for itself and the spirit to bear witness. There is never an attempt to persuade this year. There's never a attempt to persuade. And that's what we on here too in our ministry over here, real Judah Peas and Ari. We're not trying to persuade none of y'all, fam. You understand? I don't even got to do that. You dig? I'm trying to help my people. So if you see me uh, with a passion, right? If you talk to me on the phone and I have a passion, trust. I am not trying to persuade you. I just love you. You understand? And I understand the truth. And so I get passionate about the truth just before the books remember. Says, Baby, come on. you Y'all don't follow real Judah? Come on, we get passionate about the truth. We get passionate about our people. We get passionate about the music we make. We want you to feel it, to understand it in the spirit. You dig? So no, it's no persuasion going on here. We just bringing out the information. We're trying to be obedient to the, the task the Father put before us. That was an awesome introduction reading right there. It gave us an idea of what Benalim is um, dealing with in the books. Man, y'all get these books, family. The books of remembrances. Huh? This book right here, the Book of Ancient Grandmothers, will be mainly dealing with the series with the women and, and the, the things that they brought forth, right? If you have read these books, y'all, tune in. Let's get a deeper understanding than just a story. Not saying that you haven't. Let's do it together, though, right? We will be back with episode one of this series sooner than later, Father willing, y'all. We ain't gonna hold y'all tonight, though. But this series is gonna be a very powerful series for y'all. Trill talk, trill talk. Tell your homegirls about the ladies, your mamas, your aunties. The information early on is going to be based on healing, y'all. It's going to be based on us hearing the spirit and just, it's amazing. But it's going to be amazing for everybody, but especially for the sisters. Oh, praises, man. Man, y'all mash on the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you've yet to do so. Hit the bell so you're notified every time we drop something new. Huh? And it's always... I pray this message was for somebody. Our praise to Kahi, which is the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kadash, which gives us all good common wise. Our praises to Anoki said, that's our praises to the great I am loving kindness. The higher key said, <laughs> our praise the most of the land. That's our savior. Yes. Remember, family, we got to love the most high with all our mind, all our heart, and all our might. And to love our brothers and sisters like the most high loves them. See them like the Father sees them and hear them like the Father hears them. Feel for them, y'all, like the Father feels for them. It's your boy, Peasy, and beautiful Ari Amuna. Real Judah. Let go. Main truth is, ain't everybody gonna make it. That's why you gotta run your race. You know what I'm talking about? It's a thin line out here, man. Matthew 24, 40. Then shall two be in the field, then one shall be taken, the other left. Most of your partners ain't gonna make it, family too. The truth is like a car center, high turnover rate. I ain't trying to discourage you, I'm just trying to keep it real. You gotta run your race, family. You gotta run it to the end, no matter what the next man do. Let go. Angels and demons is round us, don't think they not, cause you ain't seeing them. The wicked do wicked things when you see wicked, the demons you seeing them. It could be that you 
friends with them. God forbid that you can with them. Every day I pray and sometimes fast to God. Forbid I replenish them. They beat you down. And you like it like SM. Even bruh, ain't no repenting them. Thank a higher for your shire who best of them. Are you ready for the day of the reckoning? Best do it now, cause bruh, ain't no repenting. Everything gon' be unleavened. Then ain't 50 cent, but dead, you will see many men. Many men. Many men, I pray don't fall like many men In front of swore fat men of pestilence I do the word to fortify my residence I'm still alive, yeah, that's my evidence But evidence is irrelevant When Babylon is still my settlement I'm trying to leave her in all her elements And all her God, she's worshiping And all her lies, all her death Her side of me after the economy Like, no, I'm screaming out, there will be nothing left Nothing left. You say that you won't, but I say that you sleep And you see it through drunken nights It's a spiritual war And we on the borderline But soon to be physical Every day I be all up in the biblicals You call it metaphors, I take it literal I been known not to respect individuals Yes, I call when it gets critical You send a lot of my sins, they be minimal Israelite in the mirror, I used to see criminal I deal with the truth, I don't deal with subliminal That's why most Hebrews when I see the pinnacle I what I believe, I believe the Bible And on the beat, I try to give a visual I used to walk around like I was straight invincible Not realizing I was led by the invisible Demons that wasn't hospitable Making my thoughts diabolical Woo! My spirit, yeah, free up my spirit, then go like the flesh away. flesh away. Get more and more faith, then come back with the strap and hit my flesh and put the cane. Put the cane. I got Judas, my Judas, they be in the streets and they get it in every day. Every day. Some hit big legs, some in the trap, cook it major, yeah. Major, yeah. With lemons, make lemonade. lemonade. Grinding for better days. Better Sleep day. walking kings and queens, but we chose sin for the bigger wage. Way. My partner would tell you there's angels and demons, and he ain't got open eyes. Some of the drillers casting the streets in the streets. We know I'm about the borderline. Shoulder.